Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another video. I paid £265 for a broken Xbox Series X. And this is the first broken Series X that I've purchased out of my own money. I have fixed them before, but I've never bought one for myself. So hopefully I can get these fixed and get myself a nice next generation console. This was bought off eBay and £265 equates to around about £360. US dollars at the current exchange rate so a fairly expensive purchase but it is next gen and apparently it's only got a display issue so fingers crossed we can get this fixed and fingers crossed I can move up to next gen myself and get with the times I'm an old fart but with that being said if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications and that way you don't miss any future videos and these videos are fairly expensive for me to make, so if you do like the content, then you can head over to Twitch and become a Prime subscriber if you've got Amazon Prime. So it's absolutely free to do, it takes a couple of minutes and it really does help out the channel. Helps me to keep making videos like this and buying things to fix on camera. So with that being said, let's see what's going on with this one, shall we? Alright, so this console has a prior repair attempt. I didn't notice it on the listing. I kind of bid on this in a rush because I wanted to win it. And I've been looking for a Series X that's going at a decent price for a while. I've all been going for silly money lately. And this is the first one that I could find under £300. So, yeah, I kind of bid in a little bit of a rush. But as you can see, the security seal has been tampered with. That did have a silver warranty sticker on it. It was visible in the pictures, but I didn't notice it. I probably wouldn't have paid as much if I'd have known that it was a prior repair attempt or that it's been repaired in the past. So basically what the listing says is that it was purchased from new and basically it's got no display. Apparently it was purchased at retail price, so we'll see. Let's see if it turns on. That's beep on beep off, that's not no display. Huh. Okay, that beeped on and then turned off and then it's just turned back on. Is the fan speed? It is not. Yeah, as you can see, we've got no signal here on Elgato there, but the fan's not spinning. Okay, so yeah, the port feels loose, but the fan's not spinning. All right, let's just unplug it and plug it back in, just see if it does the same thing again. It looks like it's been dropped. There's a little chip in the corner. Okay, the first time you try and turn it on, it looks like it's... Yeah, it's got beep on beep off the first time you turn it on. And now the fan's spinning. Okay, so now the fan's spinning, is it going to display? Yeah, still no display. Let me try it on the TV. Capture cards can be a little bit funny. And no, it doesn't display on the TV either. Alright, let's get it apart and we'll see what we can do. Hopefully the seller hasn't lied to me here. But yeah, you can see where the sticker was. I pulled that off this morning because I was wondering if... The Seller had maybe just put a sticker on there himself or herself. Um, don't know if it was a male or female, but I was wondering if the seller had put a sticker on themselves just so as that could um, confirm that no one had been in it. If anyone tried to uh, well tried to return it, uh, which you know that would be fair enough. I wouldn't mind that, but it looks like it's been to a repair shop before. So what I'm wondering here now is has another repair shop attempted to fix it? damaged traces or something and had to run jumper wires which have then subsequently come loose. That is always possible. Alright, so I'll remove them two screws from there. And then pop the back up. And yep, that blue stick has gone from there which means that someone definitely had this apart. I'm going to take a stab in the dark here and say that this is a prior HDMI port repair. There we go. 
So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to get this apart. I'll fast forward through this because it takes far too long on video to cover it. But if you do want to see a teardown of the Series X, I highly recommend checking out iFixit's guide. They've got a fantastic guide on how to get into this and get down to the individual parts as well as all of the screw locations and things like that. So I'll fast forward through this and I'll pick up the video when I've taken it apart. Right, okay, so I'm inside now and yeah, let's have a look at this. So I'm going to take the heating clamp off, but that's about it. So the part that I'm going to be looking at, first of all, is going to be this here on this IPU board. And there we go. Okay, so we're inside. That metal plate is missing, which is really annoying. Hate it when that plate goes missing. Uh, which means someone's definitely opened this up. I don't know what they've opened it up for. I can't quite see the HDMI port on whether it's factory or not. What we're about to find out. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. That had a lot of pressure on it. Okay. Yeah, that port's been changed. Okay. I can see it now. I can see clearly now the port is changed. Yep. Definitely had some work around the HDMI port. So let's clean off this thermal pasta first. Just going to get the majority off for now just so it doesn't go all over the desk. There we go. That will do it for now. I'll give it a proper clean later on. Let's just get this off. There we go. And I'm going to check to make sure the SSD is in here. As you can see, I haven't touched this yet. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, let's pop that back there. Such a small SSD for such a large capacity. Let's go under the microscope and we'll see what's going on with this port, shall we? All right, so it's very visibly not a factory port. The question is, has it been soldered correctly? So I'm just nudging these pins. Yeah, it seems okay. Oh, that's concerning. Although, it's not making a great contact, is it? I mean, look at that pin there. It's not great. There's not a lot of solder on some of them pins. And in fact, it's slightly out of line as well. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There's damaged traces. Look, can you see that? That might explain it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. That might explain things. So they did seem solid on first glance, but I think these are all possibly damaged traces and that we're going to have to do some trace repair here to get this going again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just be a bodge as I usually am and just put that on there like that. And I'm going to set my hot air at 480 degrees Celsius, about 40% airflow. And I'm going to just drop this port off. So I'm just going to heat up from the top. There we go, there's the port off. I'm expecting to see damaged traces here. Hmm. That solder sucker isn't working anymore. I'm going to grab a new one. Same one I've got before, but brand new. So, this one's got a lot of power. Bam. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, let's heat this up again. Wow, that's so much better. Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. That's more like it. Okay, let's pop under the scope. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, so we do have a damaged trace here. It's just one, though, by the looks of it. So it's not too bad. So let's just add some flux. A lot of people ask me what flux I use. I don't use Amtec. I use Kingbow RMA218. 
it's cheap, it does the job, it's no clean, and it just works. So people say to me, oh, you shouldn't be using cheap flux. Well, you're burning money away, literally. Amtech is overrated and overpriced, and this stuff does exactly the same job. So, yeah, it gets cleaned up at the end of the job anyway, so, you know, I'm more than happy to use cheap flux and get pretty much 18 tubes for the price of one. All right. And as you can see, the solder flows nicely. So there we go. Nothing wrong with that at all. All right. So what I need to do then is I need to run a little jumper wire for pin number one. I'm going to run that before I put the port down because it's going to be a lot easier and a lot cleaner job. So what I'll do is just expose some of this trace. If I can. Okay. And then I'm just going to try and tin it. So the flux does burn away, but I mean, I run my iron at 450 degrees Celsius, so, you know, it's to be expected. All right, so I've exposed that trace and tinned it, and what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to solder a jumper wire to it, and basically be able to recreate this pad. So I'm just going to expose the inner core of the jumper wire. This jumper wire that I use, I don't actually buy it. I... I have a brother who works in scrap, so he collects scrap for a living. And before anyone says anything, because I've had this comment before, no, he does not steal it, he's fully licensed. But he collects scrap for a living. And he gets microwaves. And inside those microwaves is a little fan. And on that little fan is enamel wire. And that's where I get this stuff from. It works really, really well. It's 0.17 millimeters in diameter works really well and it does the job i'm a cheapskate if i can save some money somewhere i'll save some money somewhere so yeah this is one of those times where i save money all right so i'm just gonna get this into line a little bit and then hold it with tweezers and just make sure i get a nice strong connection there reinforce it at the end and it decided he wanted to come up Okay, there we go, so I'm just going to get rid of some of this burnt flux, there we go, just warm it up a little bit, moves the burnt stuff out of the way, and actually I'm going to clean it, so I'll use a bit of IPA there, isopropyl alcohol, with a cotton swab, there we go, Uh, let's just have a look at this, let's see if we can get it into position. OK, 
Okay. So I'm going to come back in with the tweezers and I'm going to try and reinforce this. I'm not happy with the amount of solder that's on there, to be honest. Okay, now I'm happier. Just break away that jumper wire there, just trim it away using a blade. And I'm going to warm it up. And then I'm going to clean it up. So what I want to do now is put some conformal coating on this just to secure that jumper wire in place. I'm much happier with how that looks now. Let's dry that. There we go. And now it's conformal coating time. Or solder mask. I call it conformal coating. I know it triggers a lot of people when I do though. Which is why I do it. And you know the deal by now. If you're enjoying these type of videos then please give me a thumbs up. It does help out the channel. Okay. And if you haven't subscribed already then I am extremely disappointed <laughs> right okay so this conformal coating slash solder mask what it's going to do is it's going to protect the jumper wire from becoming short on anything else it's basically the same stuff that's on well similar stuff that's on the board itself but it's just in liquid form so as i can use it to go over the areas which i'm working in and that cue is using a UV pen. So I'm going to use that. I've got a UV laser. It's actually not UV. It's 405 nanometers. So just outside of the UV wavelength. And I'm going to cure this. People say that you can use heat to help cure it. That is absolutely correct. You can use some warm air to help cure it. But I'm not going to be using warm air because it's a small area. It's not really necessary to use any additional air to help cure it. It does go hard as a rock when you do use it, but I'm not really that fussed. It's a small area, it doesn't take long, 30 seconds or so, and it's done. And that should be nice and solid. And it is. If it changes colour when you're scraping it, then it's nice and solid. And then as you can see, that's not going to move, so it's not going to break away or anything like that which is perfect, exactly what I'm going for. So what I want to do now is just check and make sure that we've actually got a good contact and that we've got continuity from the top of the trace that we've just restored to the next point in line, which is going to be one of the filters. So I'm going to use the multimeter in continuity mode. And I'm going to be very careful because these are fragile. So these components marked EG. I'm going to attempt to test. And I might not actually get a contact on it. Nope. Don't think I can get a contact on it. So I'm going to go directly to the next point in line, which is going to be this chip. So this is the HDMI encoder, and I'm going to test from there to the end point. Yep, there we go. So I just I couldn't get a contact on the filter, and they are really fragile, so I don't want to press on it with my probes but as you can hear there we do get a beep there we go so we do have a contact from there or we do have a continuity from there to the hdmi encoder which is absolutely brilliant because that means that the jumper wire is successfully soldered all right so i'm not going to be reusing this port because i don't know if it's good or not you can see it does have the trace on there but I don't know if the port is good or not, so I'm not going to reuse it. I'm going to use a brand new port. So let's make sure them pins are not bent and they're not. Perfect. Okay, let's just make sure that's sitting flat. 
it is awesome excellent it's sitting flat so I'm going to solder some of these pins just to help it to stay stay in place pretty much and then I can solder the ground legs in I'll probably do all the pins to be honest I usually do <laughs> but never mind I usually do all the pins and then do the ground legs Okay. Damn it. Uh, I'm not concerned about solder blob too much. I'm going to make sure we get that contact absolutely perfect. Not worried about getting a solder blob or two at the minute because I can just move it all to one side. I'm paying extra attention to that jumper wire just to make sure that it solders nicely. Okay, so I have ended up doing all of the pins. I usually do, to be honest. All right, next up, I'm just going to wick away this little blob. So I'm just using a bit of solder blade here. I use goot wick. Anyone's wondering? Gootwick is really good value for money. It's really good stuff. Alright. Let's tilt that on an angle. Just trying to clear away any potential bridges that I can't see. Like that. So we gathered a little bit more solder there. There we go. Okay, let's clean this up and I can inspect it. So just spray a bit of IPA there. And then just give it a scrub with a toothbrush. And I'm going to give it a good clean. This is why I don't care about using cheap uh, flux. Because I clean it all the way anyway. So I don't care. If it does the job, then I don't care. Dry that up there. And let's give that a visual inspection. That looks good. But looks can be deceiving, so I never trust just looks alone. Let's just give it a nudge test. Good. 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 Good, 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 
good, good, good, good, good, good, good, good, good, good, good, and good. Okay. Right, so let's check in continuity mode and just see, make sure we've got no bridges that we can't see. And also make sure that this pin is soldered directly to that jumper wire by testing this in continuity mode again on this pin down here. Yep. It is indeed. And I'm going to check one pin to the next one and make sure that we don't have any bridges on these pins. And there we go. Okay, there's no bridges there. And that is good. Let's flip the board over a minute. Okay, uh, what I need to do now before I finish is just solder these ground legs in to secure it down. Shut up, multimeter. I know some of you was waiting for me to say that. Alright, so I'm just going to add a blob of solar for now, and I'm going to come back to it in a minute with some hot air. So I'm not worried about how it looks right now. To be honest, I'm not even overly concerned about... You know, if this isn't as secure as my normal job would be. Because anyone who's been watching the channel for a long time knows that I would normally do my absolute best to secure it in as much as I can. I'm not really overly fussed on this one. And the reason for that is because if I get this working, it's going to be my own console. And I'm not going to sell it. You know, I've been trying to get myself a Series X for a while now. So if I do get it working, then I'm not going to be selling it. So I'm not overly fussed about it. But I am going to do as best of a job as I possibly can. You know, set the example and all of that. But I'm not going to fret over it as much as I normally would. So I'm going to use some hot air with the iron. Let that cool down a second. So the reason I use hot air is because it pushes the solder through as well. I'm going to come to this side. I'm going to just float a little bit of solder through here. As best I can. Just to give you that added little bit of strength. But like I said, I'm not that worried about this because it's not going to move out of the place where it sits ever, and it's not going to, it's not going to be sold. It's going to be my own personal console, so I'm not particularly worried. Let's do the same this side. And then let's use some hot air. Okay. Let's come back to this side. Okay, and then I'm going to come back to the back of the board, and I'm just going to flow this once more, and then call it good. 
All right. So those. So those ground legs are looking nice, looking good. I'm just going to clean up this little bit of solder because someone decided to leave a little bit there, and then me soldering as well added to it. Let's just clean up one final time. Let's turn the board around and clean up this side again once more. And that is beautiful. Looking good. Looking good. Right, so that's made an incredible mess on the desk, but, you know, it is what it is. So, let's just wash a bit of this away. i will rather wipe a bit of it away. Good. Let's just clean up the APU. Okay, so I've broken all of that old thermal paste up. Should clean up now. Okay, that's as good as you're going to get from me. It's fairly clean. Let's just dry it off. This is a microfiber cloth. It's not going to damage anything. I am wondering whether the damage trace was possibly shorting out the ground and causing it to shut off occasionally. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's possible. I am wondering what is causing that though, so I might have to keep an eye on it. Okay, so that's good enough. And if it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. The perfect amount of thermal paste is what I want to see. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. That's ah, more like it. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So, that is, of course, the perfect amount. So, let's just clean off the heat sink. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Let's get the heat sink clamp. And um, one thing I do recommend when you're putting these back together is do not screw one screw all the way down before you move on to the next try and keep it even if you can try and keep it even pressure because these APU clamps are not messing around okay I will do it manually now because that's not going to screw in with the electric screwdriver you got no chance and now I'll finish tightening them up. There we go. We done. Okay, so I need to get these back together enough for testing. So what I need to do is just put everything back together. And I'm going to need to put it back in the housing, but I'm not going to screw it down. Because it's just a waste of time if it doesn't work. I'm hoping it works. But it wastes time if it doesn't. Actually, I, I suppose I could screw it down. It's not that many screws. And it's going to save time if I do see it working. One thing I do want to do before I put it back together fully is just clean out the HDMI cable itself. Sorry, not the HDMI cable. The HDMI port. I want to clean out the port. So when you're doing so when you're doing soldering work on a HDMI port, if you're doing any kind of soldering, even near it, I recommend cleaning out the port. All right, so let's get this thing back together, and we'll give it a good test. Hopefully, it's going to work. So I'm going to just put it back together enough for testing, I think. So that means no screws. There we go. It's the moment of truth.
Do we tempt fate by putting that sticker on? Let's see if it works. Power supply. And HDMI cable. Here we go. Okay, no beep on beep off this time. Is it going to spin? Yes. Fans spinning. Are we going to give it a display? Yes! Let's go! Let's go! That's what I'm talking about. We've got a display. This console's working. That's awesome. Free game? Ah, oh, no free game. Let me just sync up a controller. My controller needs an update. Okay, I'll let this run through the update. I don't think we're going to get 4K on the capture card because I've run through a HDCP splitter. So I'll let this run through this update here and then I'll, uh, yeah, I'll take it from there. While I'm doing that, I'm going to clean off my console. So I'm going to spray it down with some isopropyl alcohol. It's got a little bit of thermal paste and stuff on the front of the case. So I'm just going to give it a clean. Just to show you, it's the same one. I am brushing this down as well. I'm getting rid of the dust out of these holes because this is now my new console. But that's what I'm talking about. That's uh, that's an absolutely fantastic win. I do need to test it in 4K. I also need to test and make sure the disk drive is working. Shame we didn't get a disk. But never mind. And there we go. Controller is updated. Like I said, I need to test it in 4K. I don't think I'm going to get 4K outputs on the capture card. It is a 4K capture card, but I don't think I'm going to get 4K output. Let's just see if it picks up my internet. There we, there we go. Perfect. Connecting to network. I'm going to find a disk out while I'm doing that. And of course, that wants an update as well. Of course it does. It's Xbox. I'm going to skip the update for the time being. It's only a 700 meg update, but I'm going to skip it for the time being. Yeah, it's in 1080p. It's not going to work in 4K, even though it is 4K. Yeah, back to 1080p, like I thought. I'll try that in the TV in a minute. Disk drive is as smooth as a baby's bum. Let's have a look, see if Battlefield 1 loads up. There we go. Disk drive works perfect. Awesome. Okay, all that's left to test is 4K output. TV and display, um, 4K UHD. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. All working. That is an absolutely fantastic purchase. Uh, yeah, I didn't always had a prior repair attempt, but you know, I'm not really bothered too much as long as I wasn't lied to. And it was on the photo where that sticker was. So, you know, I pulled that off as soon as I saw it. I was like, oh, let's instead of putting that on there to, so they know when someone's been in it. But yeah. Uh, it's working and this is an absolutely fantastic purchase so just to summarize i paid 255 pound plus 10 pound postage couple extra around about 360 us dollars and basically i've got myself a perfectly working xbox series x and uh, yeah i'm super super happy because now i can get rid of my xbox one x and i can upgrade to the next gen so absolutely fantastic result. Super glad that I could get this working and we've saved another one from the scrap pile. So that's going to be for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. If you do have any comments or questions, I'll always do my best to answer. If you want to organise a repair, I do offer repair services. So if you want to organise a repair, get in touch using the website in the video description and you can book in the repair or you can use the contact page to inquire about the repair services. If you enjoy this type of content and you're new to the channel, then please, please, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications. Make me look a little bit more popular. <laughs> and, and if you want to support me, if you enjoy this type of content and you find it useful, then you can head over to Twitch. You can become a Twitch Prime subscriber. Absolutely free for you to do, like I said earlier on. And it does help out the channel. You can also become a channel member using the join button, which is just below the video. Or you can donate directly through Patreon, 
there's a Patreon link in the video description as well, or there's some direct donation links as well as that. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.